Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making the start, at the very least, on my review of Glinda of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is the last of the Oz books that was written by Baum. The series does continue after his death. I read this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman. Shout out to Joel. I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I am only about a third of the way through at the moment, so I'll probably finish this review tomorrow. But I wanted to make a start, so... I'm fully determined to go at once to the magic isle of the Skeezers and to the enchanted mountain of the Flatheads and prevent war and strife between their inhabitants. Dorothy and Ozma journey out into the remote lands of Oz to prevent a war between the Flatheads and the Skeezers, only to be chased down a mountain and trapped in an island city under the sea. As only Queen Kuio knows how to raise the island to the surface, it is up to the Wizard and Glinda to rescue them, but will they make it to the city in time? That actually takes us farther than I am now, and like I say, I'm about a third of the way through, so it's one of those blurbs that kind of gives away a bit too much. And so Dorothy and Ozma, they take the, um, the, the cart and the horse um, to travel somewhere, and they're like, oh, we made it in two hours, it's usually a day's journey. And I'm just like, why didn't you use the magic belt to wish yourselves there? And Baum goes, I do not suppose there is any magical thing in any fairyland to compare with a record book, on the pages of which is constantly being printed a record of every event that happens in any part of the world at exactly the moment it happens. And I'm like, well, there's Ozma's mirror for a start, which shows you anything that's happening. We get another uh, reference to the land being thickly settled, which I mentioned before, just reminds me of a, a, a writer friend of mine called Alex Kimmel, who's unfortunately uh, no longer with us. But he wrote a story that was in an anthology I worked on that was called Thickly Settled. So here, this is a great example of why I think this book is so interesting in terms of it offers some really good like advice and insights for the young people it targets, you know? Um, so here we get, Dorothy, resting herself at her fairy friend's command and eating her dinner with unusual enjoyment, thought of the wonders of magic. If one were a fairy and knew the secret laws of nature and the mystic words and ceremonies that commanded those laws, then a simple wave of a silver wand would produce instantly all that men work hard and anxiously for through weary years. And Dorothy wished in her kindly, innocent heart that all men and women could be fairies with silver wands and satisfy all their needs without so much work and worry, for then, she imagined, they would have all their working hours to be happy in. But Ozma, looking into her friend's face and reading those thoughts, gave a laugh and said, No, no, Dorothy, that wouldn't do at all. Instead of happiness, your plan would bring weariness to the world. If everyone could wave a wand and have his wants fulfilled, there would be little to wish for. There would be no eager striving to obtain the difficult, for nothing would then be difficult, and the pleasure of earning something longed for, and only to be secured by hard work and careful thought, would be utterly lost. There would be nothing to do, you see, and no interest in life and in our fellow creatures. That is all that makes life worth our while, to do good deeds and to help those less fortunate than ourselves. Deep. Oh, and we meet um, the dictator of the Flatheads. Um, Dorothy asked wonderingly, I, I hate uh, adverbs, but anyway. Is he a dictator too? Of course, was the answer. Everybody here is a dictator of something or other. They're all office holders. That's what keeps them contented. But I'm the supreme dictator of all, and I'm elected once a year. This is a democracy, you know, where the people are allowed to vote for their rulers. A good many others would like to be supreme dictator, but as I made a law that I'm always to count the votes myself, I'm always elected. I'm reading that, and I'm just like, Putin, is that you? And we get this line about Ozma, which hasn't aged well. She was only a girl but there was dignity in her pose and speech which impressed the Sudique. Oh, and then we get this like snap judgment, which isn't one of the lessons that is a good idea for uh, L. Frank Baum to share here. In a beautiful throne room, surrounded by a dozen or more young men and women, sat the queen of the skeezers, Kuio. She was a girl who looked older than Ozma or Dorothy, 15 or 16 at least, and although she was elaborately dressed as if she were going to a ball, she was too thin and plain of feature to be pretty. But evidently Queen Kuyo did not realise this fact, for her air and manner betrayed her as proud and haughty with, and with a high regard for her own importance. Dorothy at once decided she was snippy and that she would not like Queen Kuyo as a companion. And then it turns out that snap judgement is accurate as well, but I'm just like, shouldn't be judging people like that, mate. And they keep saying fishes as the plural of fish, which just wound me up. And a great line. <laughs> Sudik stared at the swan a moment, then he yelled to his men, Shoot her! Shoot the saucy bird! Just reminds me of Spoony Bard from, I can't remember, one of the old Final Fantasy games. It got mistranslated from Japanese. Okay, and then Glinda the Good basically finds out what's happening because it's written in her magic book. But at the beginning it was said her magic book couldn't tell what was happening in that part of Oz. Because it was like unexplored and protected by other magic. So how come she could suddenly tell? And then everybody goes to go and rescue Dorothy and Ozma. Including the Scarecrow who was ruling Oz 
in Ozma's absence. So I'm like, who's in charge of Oz now? Everyone's gone. Like, literally everyone is gone. Probably the most senior character I can think of who hadn't gone was General Ginger, who once tried to usurp Ozma. And I guess she's now in charge because she's like the only one left. I don't know. I don't know who was running Oz. Like anybody, I could have just gone there and just been like, right, I'm in charge now. Oh, and then we get, it may be some kind of radium, said the wizard. No, replied Glinda, it is more wonderful than even radium, for I recognize it as a rare mineral powder called Gaulu by the sorcerers. And it's a bloody good job it wasn't radium, because it was just loose in a drawer. So if it had been radium, all of the characters would have just died of radiation poisoning, which would have been actually a really good ending to, to the Oz books, I think. But no, it was not to be. So I guess this was written after radium had been discovered, but before people realized that it's, it's not good for you. And then we end with this one line here from Princess Ozma. Uh, well, this little paragraph, I'll read it. This is the last paragraph of the book. And bear in mind, this is the last book that L. Frank Baum wrote. I'm very glad I went to see these people, said Princess Ozma, for I not only prevented any further warfare between them, but they have been freed from the rule of the Sadiq in kui and are now happy and loyal subjects of the land of Oz, which proves that it is always wise to do one's duty, however unpleasant that duty may seem to be. And I think that kind of sums this up. I, I think I said earlier, so this book, it might not be the best individual story out of all the Oz books, but I do think it is one of the best ones in terms of all of the wisdom it has to share for the kids, if you ignore the sort of snap judgment stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was pretty good, and it was a decent ending to the original Al Frank Baum books. I will be curious to see what it what it's like after uh, other authors took over it, so we'll see if, if Joel Swagman fancies to continue our buddy reads of them. So I gave Glinda of Oz by L. Frank Baum a strong 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Glinda of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.